Hi everyone, this is Rebecca Salisbury with my personal presentation for Business and Professional Communications class. I'm excited to get to share with you all what I've researched, what I've learned, and for all the students watching this, I'm excited to see your presentations as well and get to dive into these topics a little deeper with you in the hope that we can all advance our professional careers and development. So with that being said, I want to jump right into it and give you a little introduction about what I'm going to be talking to you about today. So my topic is having successful client relationships. And I want to take a second here to touch on the relevancy of this. In all of our careers, whatever we're planning on doing, we'll have some sort of client relationship. We may call it a client, we may call it a customer, something else, but there's going to be something. Uh, we've talked a lot in this class about relationships with coworkers, relationships with employers. So I was really eager to dive a little bit into the client side of things because it is so important to our professional success. But why am I credible to speak about this topic? Well, firstly, I've done extensive research. In preparing for this topic, I looked at skills needed for client relationships. I looked at what a client relationship is. I examined all the nuances and different facets of client relationships. So the amount of research I've done is the first point in which I'm credible. Secondly, I have a background in dealing with customer service and client relationships. As I've mentioned in my resume, I did work as a cashier. And while that is, this is different than some client relationships, it did give me some soft skills used in customer relations and client relations. And thirdly would be my communication background. I have a strong communication background already in dealing with people and in interpersonal relationships. So these, this is why I'm credible to speak on this topic. And before I get into it, I wanna give you a little preview of what I'm gonna talk about so you can follow along. I wanna start by talking about why do we need this in the first place? Why are successful client relationships so important? Why am I even talking about this? Then I'm gonna go into skills needed. I'm gonna examine some soft skills and just some basic skills needed to have successful client relationships. And it wouldn't be any good if I just examined these things like, well, why do we need this and the skills and then didn't give you any tips on how to implement this. So my third point is going to be practical implementation of having a successful client relationship and how you can be better in this field in your professional career. So let's get into it. First of all, why do we need this? Why are client relationships so important? So let's talk a little bit first about what a client relationship is. According to Sandeep Kashyap in 2018, he defined it as relationships that a business has with its clients and the way in which it treats them. It is the way a business communicates with existing customers. So one thing I wanna look at here is the concept of a business communicates with existing customers. According to that same source, it is six to seven times more expensive for a business or firm to bring in new clients than it is to maintain relationships with existing ones six to seven times more expensive. So if we can't maintain those client relationships, if we can't have success in those, we're gonna be losing clients, we're going to be um, pouring more money into bringing new clients in, and that is just gonna be a vicious cycle of continuance. Ultimately here, we have to address what we're doing to make successful client relationships and what needs to be done in that field. Additionally, um, poor service has led to big companies losing up to $75 billion. So I've given you two numbers that demonstrate just the expense of not doing this, the expense of not having successful client relationships and not being able to maintain those relationships. And from a personal standpoint as well, your personal reputation hinges on this. You have a network, you have people that know you professionally, whether that be clients or employers or coworkers, and they talk, word of mouth gets out. So if you're not maintaining successful relationships, your personal reputation is going to take a hit, your reputation with your employers is gonna take a hit, and your reputation for being able to have these interpersonal skills is also going to take a hit. And building and maintaining a successful relationship with a client obviously offers success in all these fields. So this is why this is so important, because without it, you're going to suffer these consequences. So nextly, I want to get into my second point. What are the skills we need? So if this is so important, then how can we actually maintain successful relationships with clients? Well, according to application architecture in 2023, as well as the previous source I cited, here are some of the skills needed. And I wanna look through these skills, I'm gonna give a list of them, and then I'm gonna go back and explain each one a little bit more. Active listening, clear communication, taking the time to follow up, adaptability, recognizing a client's needs, and time management. So let's look at all these a little bit. First of all, active listening. This is something that, as most of us are communication majors, we've talked about extensively. It is so, so important to be an active listener. And we communicate this in two ways. First of all, verbally. There are verbal cues we can give, and there are also silent cues we can give, such as, I'm not talking when you're talking. I'm not interrupting. I'm not so eager to say what I need to say that I'm not taking the time to listen to you. 
And then there are verbal cues. If I'm turned away, if I'm facing the other direction, if I'm on my phone, that clearly is demonstrating not interested at all. And let's think about this from a client perspective. If I'm a client and I am taking goods and services from you and we have this relationship and I come in for a meeting and you're on your phone, you're demonstrating that you are not interested in me. You are not interested in what I'm giving the company. You're not interested in anything that I bring to the table. And that is an extreme level of disrespect and tanks a client's relationship with you. Secondly, clear communication. This is so important for client relationships because it is multifaceted. You have to have a clear communication firstly of what you offer to the client. You have to have a clear communication of deadlines and when things are going to get done. And you have to have a clear communication about how the relationship is going to move forward. If we're off in this fuzzy land of, ah, this client I don't fit super well, or I'm not actually providing the services they need, that's not good for you or the business's reputation. Thirdly, adaptability. Every client is going to be vastly different. Different in personalities, different in background, different what they're looking to take from your company. And because of this, you have to be able to adapt. So you may be super bubbly, but that personality may completely throw someone off. You may have to tone it down a little bit. As a professional, you have to be able to adapt to different situations. You have to be able to talk to people as they need to be talked to. Clients are going to have different questions. Some questions are going to be hard, and you have to be able to address those with an attitude of adaptability. Thirdly, recognize that clients are individuals, and this plays into that adaptability. Clients have unique needs. They have unique things that they need from that company. And if you treat every client like a check on the box, the dance monkey dance thing we talk about, like I just want to know what you need from me, and I want to know how to get it to you, and that's it. No, it's, it's about a relationship. Form that relationship with the client and recognize them as an individual. Thirdly, time management. This is so important in every field of life, but we see it in a client relationship. Clients do not want to be taken advantage of their time. They don't want to sit in a meeting for hours and hours talking about nothing. They want results. And you, for efficiency's sake, should as well. So consider time management when dealing with clients on both fronts. Guard your own time and set boundaries, as well as guard their time and set boundaries and don't talk to them constantly. And lastly, the art of the follow-up. Clients want to know you're thinking about them. Clients want to know they're appreciated. Clients want to know that you have a continuous relationship with them. And that is why following up is so important. You want to continually be in contact with your clients. You want to be assessing what they need from you and looking at how you can provide the best services possible for them. So those are some skills needed. But now I want to look at practical implementations. And in this section, I want to get a little bit into how you can really mess up a client relationship and how to steer away from that. Firstly, one of the most important practical implementations is that you have to manage expectations. This is crucial. And I talked about this in the skills needed. Time management plays into this. Clear communication plays into this. You and a client have to know exactly what each person is expecting. So how can you do this? First of all, talk about it. Have a meeting and bring notes and write down exactly what the goals are for that meeting and what you plan to get out of it. Write down what the client says. Write down what the client needs. Just ask them, what do you need from me and from this company? Secondly, give real emotions. So yes, you may have to adapt to different customers, but don't try to fake it. Clients notice this. Don't try to just put on all the charm you can and layer yourself in that and then say hollow things. No, show real, genuine, personable emotion like we've talked about in different lectures. Be professional, but be genuine. And that really leads to better relationships because again, this isn't just about forming a transaction. It's about forming a relationship. Lastly, don't make excuses. If you mess something up, own up to it. Don't go blaming it on the company. Don't, unless it's the company's fault, don't go blaming it on others. If you make a mistake, own up to it and precisely communicate how you're going to fix that in the future. This is one of the practical parts. So if you mess up within that time frame of this relationship with the client, you have two choices. You can either let them leave and lose that client, or you can explain to them how you are going to avoid making that mistake ever again. Do some self-reflection. Look at what you could have done better in this situation. And lastly, use planning tools. Client relationships, like many other things within business, can be planned. So you wanna look at planning practically. Maybe you say, I'm gonna reach out to this client every single Monday. I'm gonna reach out to this one every single Wednesday. And you have a firm plan in place. You can't just go into this expecting like, oh, I'll just figure it out, I'll just float. No, have a plan for how you're going to address each client's needs. Maybe get a binder, maybe do it on an Excel sheet, any way that works for you. But you need a clear plan for how you're going to communicate with clients and to make their lives better. So in conclusion, 
Having successful relationships with clients is so important to our professional communication and our professional careers. I've given three uh, points today. Firstly, why we need this. It's integral, as I've said, to our careers, for network building, for our reputation, for the companies we're working for, for our relationship with our employers, for mitigating expenses, all of those things. It's so, so important to have a successful relationship with clients. I've given some skills for how to do this, such as active listening, time management, clear communication, and the art of the follow-up. And then lastly, I looked into practical implementations. I looked at planning, at how to manage expectations, and how to be genuine and real. So I wanna leave you today with this thought. How can you improve? Look at your relationships currently. If you have a job, look at your relationships with customers. If you don't have a job, look at your relationships with those who are expecting something from you. Those to who you provide a skill or a service. How do you treat them? Take a minute to be introspective and to be reflective. Look at your reputation for the, through the eyes of that person. Look at the skills that I've listed and see if you're implementing those in that relationship. When you start to implement these skills practically, you will notice the difference. The respect in this relationship and the mutual benefits that you will receive are huge. So that's why I encourage you to look at how your current customer and client relationships are developing and to take some time to improve them if needed. Thank you.